The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advise professionals, stay on top of tech trends, and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where your clients have the best wealth technology at their fingers. With NetWealth's next-gen client portal and mobile app, clients can view and manage their portfolio, assets, and accounts wherever they are. By adding external bank and property feeds to their NetWealth account, they can get a true picture of their wealth. And by giving them the ability to transact and manage their cash, they can feel in control of their wealth. A world of client engagement awaits. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Today we're talking with Ben Nielsen from Complete Wealth. Ben's also a lecturer and academic at Central Queensland or CQ University and has recently had research published relating to how the use of tech, in particular Platform Plus, may be able to streamline data collection in the financial planning process saving time but also improving data accuracy. We chat about the findings and just how he and the team at Complete Wealth are able to service so many more clients than the average modern advisor, which also involves unheard levels of advice document production and an Amazon-style same-day delivery process. I love how Ben just cuts to the chase and his desire to introduce wide-reaching implications into the profession. And in particular, his recent call for us to, and I'm quoting Ben here, actually act like professionals and create the world in which we operate in, whereas at the moment we're simply or merely existing in it. I started by asking Ben what the oldest piece of tech he still owns is and whether he still uses it. I have, very similar to my wife, really heavy ties to the stuff that I bought because I look after it. So I've got a scientific calculator that I think I stole off Clayton in maybe 2009 and I've still got it and I refuse to get a new one. It's exceptional. It's Trojan. I absolutely love it. Um, and I refuse to until it breaks. Yeah, I'll I'm, keep it forever. I'm similar. Like, is that a like a daily use sort of thing? Like taking that decline yeah, appointment? Yes, yeah. Like the fourth part doesn't really work, so I kind of just figure out what the number I think it is. Gotcha. Is. Yep. Yeah. You should your best guess there. No, amazing. And then um, you know, is there one or two ways that you're using AI either personally or in your work life, Ben? Probably shouldn't mention this to the extent that I will, but I'm also <laughs> Very, very aware that the more I say here, the more people can copy and plagiarize and steal, which is exactly what I use AI for. Um, so I use it for sort of three key concepts. I use it for um, non-essential responses. So I lecture at a couple of unis and I use it for students to respond to questions that aren't really that important and I need to teach them how to find their own answers. Right. I use them for uh, AI ex- almost exclusively now for prospects. So if they ask me a question, I'll just bang it into uh, AI and then get it to respond to them and then i also use it um because of the volume that we deal with we often don't have enough time to creatively craft comprehensive emails to to clients concerning comfort so i'll often write what i want to write which is the specifics and then i'll use ai to bolster parts of it so that they get the comfort with it and it works really well i'll hit here's the absolute specifics and then please add some comfort sentences here and i'll go copy paste send and a lot of them really enjoy it because it's certain levels of depth very, very quickly. Cool. That's three really cool uh, applications of AI there. And then, I mean, are people aware that you're using that, maybe in those first two examples where you've got responses oh, to questions? The people that know me, okay. like that doesn't <laughs> That's not him. Okay. feel like you, but... <laughs> but especially for the new guys and especially when they need it, it's incredibly helpful because... Often they're not asking the question that they have asked. So it caters to both sides. So if you ask me a specific question, I'll give you a specific answer. But often they want more than that. And AI helps me to give them that without losing significant time for creating it. I love it. 
Okay. I mean, so I reached out to you, Ben, as I saw on LinkedIn that you recently had an article accepted in the Journal of Finance and Data Science. I'm really keen to get into that, but do you mind sort of starting with your origin story? So the origin story of Ben Nielsen and and where you are now, where you are today. Yeah, I'm a walking idiot and the difference between me and everybody else is that I accept it. Um, So I started life as a kickboxer, you know, because that's really (laughs) going to pay the bills, isn't it? Went to Tano, had a bunch of fights, uh, and then came back and realized that there's kind of no longevity in that. Right. It's a very short career, if you can call it that. Um, and then so I just managed to fall into financial planning, went through uh, the Horizons Academy, managed to get a certain freedom of opportunities just literally offered to me. And I went, yep, on all accounts. And um, so I bought a business, moved up north. I had nothing going for me. So I figured, what what is there to lose? I remember um, vividly, doing one of my first loan applications where the guy said to me, do you need a second page for your assets? And I was like, no, <laughs> got a bank account and a little car. What, what else? Would it, what do other people put in here? You know, um, <laughs> and that we ran that for about 11 years, bought a few registers on the way through. And then we've recently merged in with Complete Wealth for sort of a, a series of reasons, but high level. I recognized that my serviceability was much higher than my levels of activity. And by offsetting all those tasks, you know, brokerage and responses and phone calls and all that sort of jazz, I could be incredibly impactful um, to like triple the amount of people that we did. And uh, so, and I think we've been with Complete Wealth for about eight months now. And so my client list has tripled in that time. And I still don't really work a full week yet. Goodness me! So, what are we it's talking? Pause. If you do that on purpose, is that? <laughs> no, I'm just just <laughs> pick, my, pick my jaw up off the floor. Then <laughs> they're bent. So, in terms of tripled, like what sort of numbers are we talking? So, we had about seventy five client groups, and now we've got about two twenty five. Wow. Give us eight. So, uh, you know, they're no different than anyone else's clients. Like some need SOS, some need ROS, some need you know a couple of different SOS for different entities. But collectively speaking, it's about two hundred and twenty five agreements. So the specifics aren't hugely important, um, but that's just the level of activity. And I'm uh, not the most highest performing in our office yet. Right. Um, so the top in our office is, I think, 324 or 325, and he still doesn't work a full week yet. Wow. Far out. That's um, This is uncharted territory. That's just incredible. And then I guess uh, that would obviously be supported by – the the research that you've done. Do you mind sort of giving us an overview of that and then we can sort of go through the actual exact questions or specific questions that you sought to answer in that research and what you found? Go ahead. I'll be as practical as I possibly yeah. can too because I feel like a lot of the buzzwords that I hear when I listen to podcasts just annoy me. Yeah. And so I'm going to give you real specific examples Love and it. then I hope that you light up LinkedIn and I, all those comments and ask me why. Um, so I did my thesis on the barriers to accessing financial advice. And there's a whole series of literature here, um, but I specifically wanted to know what stops Australian advisors punching out documents and servicing people like basically every other region. So in UK, I think they have like a minimum of about 450 agreements. The US, it's like double that. And for some reason, the Australian sector, although it's got very similar regulations, kind of only manages about 100 groups her advisor. Um, and so I managed to break it down into sort of six key areas. And then we offered six different research projects and had six publications. And just for the geeks in the room, you only need one to become a doctor. And I did six because I don't want to pay for them. So while I'm with USQ, thanks guys, uh, they are footing the bill. <laughs> so if you're thinking about doing a thesis, do that. Much easier. So the one that I got accepted through Oxford was £8,000. Um, and yeah, so naturally, right. So the, the six barriers, uh, one was professionalism. Yep. The second was trust. Third was engagement. Uh, four was comprehension. Fifth was cost. And the sixth was, uh, the creation and the accuracy of advice documents. And so, um, do you want me to just give like a brief overview of every single one? Let's and do it. We can Absolutely. Put it in so, so the professionalism, um, Watson Murphy did a study in 2008 and looked at the key components of professional, um, Recognized professional, profession, sorry. Watson, I'll just bring that one back because it, you know. Yeah. 
So Watson Murphy uh, looked at the recognised requirements for um, professionals and then they modelled the Australian sector and they said, what do we have and what don't we have? And they concluded that we weren't recognised yet. We weren't acting like a profession. And then I recreated this study in 2000 and I think it was 19 and found that those key elements that we're missing had now been introduced and we had all the academic um, features of a recognised profession. And so that was a big fat tip. Uh, the second was trust. So we went uh, through the ASIC banning register for the last, I think it was eight years, yep. four years pre-COVID and four years post-COVID. Sorry, not COVID, um, Royal Commission. And we looked at what the instances were with misconduct, where the areas were, and then what levels of education people had, and then look for a, a correlation between that and that. And then we, we compared the results to the post four years. And we found some really interesting studies for that. And then we released that to ASIC and said, hey, if you guys are looking for dodgy people, <laughs> here's uh, what we think they look like. <laughs> and in true ASIC standing, they came back and they said, well, thank you. That was it. <laughs> Two you. years. Right. Pretty cool. <laughs> There was engagement, which is uh, the one that we sort of uh, alluded to before. How are you engaging your client? How are you getting the information? And how are you making them feel like they have valid parts of input? And most of that came to software. So we know that the clients know more of their situation than we ever will, and they know it quickly. And so all we did is created an area where they could put that on paper and give it to us at their leisure. So instead of attending an office with your kids and your husband or whatever, um, and setting aside an hour for a very dictator-based relationship, we just said, can you do it over here? And then can you send it to us in a secure environment? And then we modeled what that looked like. And we found astronomical benefits. It was significantly faster. People were doing after hours because it was their data. It was the levels of accuracy was so much higher. And uh, quite an interesting one, especially from the literature, people felt like it was specifically their plan Whereas if you just sort of don't understand what goes into it and you get an SOA, it, it's kind of hard to tie that and those recommendations to why it's important to you. So are you sort of saying there that if you're thinking about a traditional approach where the prospective clients or the clients are just answering questions, they're not sure whether all of that data is being considered or not? Whereas okay. Why it's important, why you're asking, and specifics too, like if I said to you right now, what's your super number? You're going to go, Good question. I don't know. I think it starts with a nine. You know, but if I say here's a link, when you're ready, which, you know, put the kids down, have dinner, get the stuff off your chest, then put it down, it's going to be way more accurate and it only takes you one instance. Yep. So if we look at the time, much faster than you telling me, I put it on a fact client and then I got to put it somewhere, just as a complete waste. So if we're looking for like a fix or a traditional fixed cost to serve, about 60% of our billable hours um, is taken up by that data collection phase. Wow. And about none of it is valuable to the client. I say these things to antagonize the listeners so that they'll get in the comments and fight me um, because I want the interaction. No, oh, I hope they do. Um, 60% billable. Okay. That is that is um, yeah, that's really quite staggering. So clearly that is really helping you from a, um, you know, bringing on new clients and, and helping your existing client base or ongoing. How does that then translate to the big bad document that comes out to the end? What, what sort of well, tips have you got there? Amazing, right? So two cool things happen. One, it removes the location barrier and the time barrier. You and I can service clients internationally. We can service clients in Tassie, at Perth and whatever. I can do it from my office. You can do it from anywhere. Um, two, with the tech stack that we get to at the moment, once it's in put, it carries its hypothetical weight all the way through. So you say super X amount. Once it's put in there, I just have to accept it and it feeds right through the document instantly. So it's a one-touch system because I was really worried about human error. If anybody's seen anybody else's handwriting, it's terrible all the time. And if we miss that one digit, that's the difference between dropping the ball across, you know, like transferring a thing, consolidating the wrong fund, not getting it right, yada, yada, yada. The implications, especially for our game, are huge and so i wanted to well, you know i suppose the word is being behooven we want to be behooven to the original part of the data if it's right once you don't touch it and then it follows all the way through so 
tolerances, um, goals is a big one, specifics regarding bank accounts and pension details. And if you can give it to me in a secure environment, I haven't got a tip. Like half of these guys that I'm dealing with now, I've never touched their tax file number. They put it in once, it goes to the part where it needs to be saved, and then we don't touch it. So, so much of the software is capable of doing that, and it just decreases our need to be involved, which decreases the heck out of the potential errors. Yep. No, that's that's really compelling. So, if we're if we're um, you know dealing with this amount of clients, like how much how much sort of face time, and whether that's virtual or in person, would you say that you're spending? with an average client maybe if we talk about for a new to business client and then i assume you've got different or maybe you don't it's probably just an assumption in terms of ongoing sort of service packages what sort of advisor to client facetime or advisor to or sorry client to practice facetime would they experience typically so we have two elements right so it's the part that they want and the part that i need to not get sued or the part that i need to you know um so for a review client, no matter how big they are, no matter how comprehensive their needs are, it's about an hour and 20 minutes of prep and regulatory and document release, start to finish. Most of our billings are somewhere between, say, I don't know, three and six grand a year. We've got clients either side of that, um, but we kind of enjoy not having huge fees because then if you lose them, it's not such a big burden. And also, I'll say this because I'm me. Um, if you're charging a, a lower service amount, three, four, five thousand dollars, they don't expect the world from you. So you can you're always there to service. But once we've done our obligations, it's kind of just playtime. We're just doing whatever. The clients come in, they have a cup of coffee. That's fine. But once we've got those regulatory issues off our chest, so it, but, we, but because you build that, you've still got four or five hours up the. You know, if you need to, extend it with them. But usually, start to finish is about an hour and a half on the nose. So we've got this concept called advisor assistance. So the second we book the appointment, they go in, they make sure all the data is right. They make sure your driver's license up to that, all those things that are sort of semi non-essential but kind of important. They'll get reports, whatever, and then they allocate that task to the advisor for the day. Drain. So all the advisor has to do is walk in and say, what have we got? How does this meet our goals? And then during that appointment, we'll have the implementation officer come in as well. And so one of those two will do the fact find that'll be complete. That gives us a green tick, and then they'll move off and get the documents sorted. So I might say, chat, 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 chat. Now that you know implementation is here, hatch it. We're going to do two switches. We're going to draw some money out. We're going to do, you know, catch up contribution for you and a bigger one for your wife. Yada yada yada. When you need to do that, you'll speak to this person. She'll provide you with the BPA details or whatever it needs to be. You might be a couple of forms, or we'll release it to you. And then my job is done. And then I go, and she comes. She says, here's how we do that, here's what we need to do, here's what whatever. And then they release a document in the meeting as well. So usually it's done about an hour after you have left the appointment. Okay. So the the meeting and the conversation is still fresh in the mind of, of everyone who's been involved and it's not sort of two, three weeks after or basically, well, yeah, you go. Yeah. Wash your mouth out. Three weeks. No, 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 no. In very rare instances, sometimes when products have gone down, it's at the end of the day. And I usually call and say, sorry about that, we had something happen, how and our internet died, you know, whatever. Um, and we release everything to their client portal. Okay. So they can always have a look at it and I'll just say it's in there if we need to get you to sign some documents or whatever, but it's highly unlikely that it takes us more than the end of that day to release your document. Wow. That no, this is this is incredible. So just something I'm picking up there too is so you mentioned you basically got like an onboarding team and an implementation team. Um I assume that is helpful from maybe like a batching work perspective. Like everyone is really clear on their roles and responsibilities. You don't have that. But yeah, so it's called advice preparation. I can do 50 of those a day because they know exactly what it is. So you're screaming, you get a statement, you get a thing, anything. Well, click. What day is it? Flick it to Ben, flick it to Matt, flick it to whoever. Everyone's job is to get that task off there. And then if anybody's sick, you can just, like you say, batch those and get those five... And then go, can we throw these over to these other people within the same team? Because there's four of them. Can you do this for, say, Calvin because he's ill? Yep. So the work still gets done. Yep. No, perfect. You've, you've clearly created a really like incredible flywheel approach there. And then would you say clearly the client portal is essential to this? Like would it fall down without that being involved in the process? Yeah, there's, there's two really key elements. One for security, it's 
authenticated. You know, you can't just get in there. Some, but more importantly, it allows us to get documents off our chest without printing anything. So, like, I did one today. True story. Um, bloke's down, I saw him yesterday in Gladstone. He's gone down to Brisbane. I said, we still need to get this done. I don't care that you're traveling. Um, I'll throw the document into your um, SOA, and then, uh, sorry, into your client portal, and I'll call you Friday morning, and he's like, I'm driving. And I was like, what, why do I care? You know, can... But why is this a thing? Do you, this is a significant save and we're about to move into income facts. And I was like, cool. So, so, <laughs> pull over. Like, why is this a thing? <laughs> Do you want it or not? Like, it's not me. <laughs> it's your benefit. And he goes, fair enough. We make it 7.30. Done. Perfect. So, he's got the opportunity to read the document for the next two days. Then I'll ring him and I'll say, scroll to this page, this page, this page. These are the key important things. I'll release him a pin. He um, puts the pin into it. That's how we digitally sign it. I think from memory, he's got like an application to do through documents or DocuSign. And I'll just do that as well. And then while he's traveling for the next three months, I think he's got three months until he hits 60 and then we're starting an income phase. So he gets all that benefit. And then when he comes back into the country, bang, 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 he's done. Because he was like, oh, I'm going to miss out on three months. I was like, no, I've got things to do, buddy. We've got to get this done. Yep. He's like, touche. So offering them a solution is amazing because... They want the benefits there for them as well. Yeah. And you, you're not interrupting clients' lives. Like clearly that client can just do what they wanted to do. They're not having to come in and put everything at a standstill while you prepare this sort of panacea plan. I mean, we're talking – you talked to me before, this is before we hit record, about the, the numbers, like the output of advice documents. Do you mind sort of taking us through how many you're producing – on a monthly yeah, basis. It's still because Maddie's still beating me. Um, so this month we've done about 148 between, oh, uh, look, there's five of us, but two of us are really, really pulling it. Yeah. Um, so, and I think April was about 120. March we had the conference, so that was only 80 um, because all five of us were out for a week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we've been ordered a number of times and there's no real issues. I think people, if I can sort of step out for a second, yep. people think that advice is inherently hard and complicated and it's not even complicated advice is just a series of instructions so do this establish this switch this put this thing here and we sort of get a bit you know overwhelmed with oh it's a you know geared sms efforts or whatever even that it's just a thing that asks for another thing and so when we look at recommendations we just look at what the action is so Roll your super, put some money into your super, start an investment account, switch your investments. These are all things that advice inherently is. And what we've done is created a way to capture that first sentence and then release it through their client portal. So even if you don't read the document, there's four or five things. So for example, the bloke that I'm seeing tomorrow, we're rolling a super, we're making a switch, and then we're starting an income account in three months, right? And some would say that that's difficult, complicated advice. He's got mm-hmm. a bit of money, so we're going to roll with whatever we hit the cap and then we're going to pull some money out and give it to his wife. Even that is only a series of three or four sentences. And so the quicker we can get the stuff off our chest, the less we have to worry about how long advice takes and the more people we can see. So um, this isn't normal, but we bought a register maybe two months ago. And then so the um, exiting advisor came up to our office last week and we did Wednesday through Friday, 45 minutes appointments, 45 minute appointments back to back three days in a row we saw 14 people per day wow every single one of them got a document on the day and i think we still left the office about 6 6 30 so it wasn't it was a big day but it wasn't stupidly you know very still very doable yeah and to give you an idea of those numbers that's kind of half a year's worth of work for the average australian advisor yeah um yeah just once again picking the, the jaw up from the floor i mean how I assume the tech is also the, the same tech you're using is generating those SOAs. Do you mind sort of talking about, you know, how, how long are these documents? Are you doing much sort of post merge editing? Like, is it really like when you get that document, are you doing it yourself? Are you getting a, a version that's ninety percent complete and going, let's fix this, this, and this? Like, talk to talk to me about a typical uh, all processor. paper that I had <laughs> comprehension. So we actually looked into what consumers think about the size and the language that we use in our documents. Yes. And I f- forget exactly, mate, but I'm pretty sure that when I looked at it, KPMG said that like the average Australian advice document was 111 pages. Yep. And we found that consumers just don't have the capacity to take that all on. So yes, our software has been tailored and we've done a bit of work um, 
reading the asset reg and reading some of the AFCA determinations to just figure out what we can reduce. Um, and just for the people that listen to this, we reduce it um, with respect to having it in the document, but we still have it on the file. So it's sort of this catch-22 of if AFCA comes knocking on the door, we still have it. We just don't waste our time in very valuable space do- whacking it in the document that the consumer doesn't care about. So it says, here's modeling. Here's a screenshot of modeling. The full document's 12 pages. That's in the client portal if you want it, you geek. Um, but the part that you care about is here. So the average document that we punch out now, regardless of levels of comprehension, is between sort of 20 and 30 pages. Very straight to the point. Very simple language, very easy to understand language. And it references a lot of other things. So it will say, for example, salary sacrifice in the super. And we'll say, here's why, here's how, here's how much. Very simple, half a page, right? If you want to know more about what salary sacrifice the super is, here's a link to Money Smart. If you want, if you want to go down that rabbit hole, here's all the resources you want. It's not worth me wasting time and valuable paper telling you all about that. Here's a couple of links. Move over. And because we can do that, um, we wrote it for each template. So if there's any change, the template changes as well. It's really quite cool. So the cool thing about Money Smart, don't tell them that we know this yet, <laughs> is that when they update their links, they keep the same link. Oh. So for example, if Money Smart says the concession of contribution, the ATO does it as well. The concession of contribution is twenty seven thousand dollars or whatever, and we use that link and we put that link in the document, and then they change it like they will in a month to go. It's actually thirty thousand. Our link's still accurate. Nice. So it becomes like an archive. Yeah, that's really cool, cool. right? Yeah. So we're always abreast of the changes, and then because of that, we've just sort of reduced the first part. We don't put so much emphasis on client details because this will shock you, but they know who they are. They don't need you to tell you what their middle name is. And then we go straight into recommendations because that's what they pay you for. And then we do a bit of modeling, a bit of emphasis on the fees, any further info, and that's it. Done. Bang. Love it. No, that's really, that's really great. Um, so, Ben, in your research or the research that's just come to, come to life recently, it's clear that there's a massive reduction in the cost of advice in using technology. In particular, Platform Plus is the solution that you use. Uh, do you mind taking us through how you approach that and what the findings were? In particular, I think it was budgeting and cash flow where I noticed the, the most um, or the most significant reduction in cost. So we see uh, we approach this with like a lower, the lowest cost to access the thing that we need type mentality. And the more I can push onto your plate about your situation, the less I have to build for and the less I have to fiddle with. And so we looked at sort of, substructures of advice we did cash flow and budgeting we did superannuation we did investment and we did retire planning retirement planning sorry and we found that the average cost across the 117 firms that we survey um just for cash flow and budgeting was about 2200 bucks um the average cost for superannuation was about 33 investment went to about 32 and then any form of retirement planning started at about 42 and that kind of ran off the metric of about 450 bucks an hour and just sort of stock standard levels of advice. Um, and then what we managed to do was model and evidence the same type of advice with the same advisors within the same year time frame using um, non-traditional methods, which were digital applications. So how do you get that information? And then once you have that information, how much less time does it take you to punch out that advice? Um, and we found that on about 115 of the 117 offices, the reduction in cost was about half. So we managed to wipe like a good thousand, fifteen hundred bucks on every sub strategy. So cash flow went down to about twelve eighty. Super went down to about two grand. Um, investment was quite interesting because that went down by like half. I think that was only eighteen hundred. Yeah, well. Um, and more importantly, retirement came down to like thirty three hundred. And for the cons- that the old advisors in the room said, "What about my profit?" Um, because they're moving faster. They actually received or realized high levels of profit up to about 25%. So the faster you can move and the quicker you can get the advice off your chest, statistically, the more profit you can realize and then also the more people you can see. Now, I'm a researcher, right? So I'm inherently biased because I wrote this. But there's been three instances of it too. So the second one that we did was um, investigating the impact of financial content, SOS structure. And we found that uh, just to copy the same scopes, the existing average to write an SOA plan that looks at super and insurance, on average, I think this was 328 documents that we did it across, across a two-year period. So 328 
position, another 328 comparison. The average for super and insurance was 5.8 hours. And then using a reduction in the template and sort of just figuring out how you can do things faster with the links that we've already talked about. We had a 362% decrease in time. Wow. So it went from 5.8 hours to 1.6 hours. Um, and a lot of you might be saying, oh, I don't do that. Yeah, cool. I get it. Insurance is difficult. Um, retirement planning, a plan used to take about 4.4 hours. Um, and the same thing. So we saw about a 314% reduction in time. So the introduced average for the smaller SOAs especially with retirement, um, went down to about 1.4 hours. So it doesn't take a genius to figure out if you're spending four or five hours less on writing a plan, you bill 600 bucks an hour. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Here's the, pl- here's the page too. So there's the existing average. Now, this is from the four leading um, AFSL licensees from yeah. 2019. I yeah. can't remember who they were. I do. I'm just not going to say it. Yeah. <laughs> um, the existing average was 62 pages. And then that came down by 45%. So when we introduced a different template, it went down to 28 pages. The 28 pages are still kind of big, but a whole heap better. And then um, just to put another feather in my own little, <laughs> it's all the Ben show, isn't it? We, exactly. When we started using ChatGPT, and this one got published, and yes. um, this is one I alluded to before. Yes. Um, we found per strategy, if you are to use an external power planner, per strategy, so super or retirement or investment or whatever, the average median to write a simple strategy is about three and a bit hours and costs you about 900 bucks per strategy. It's a super 900, super and, you know, 1800. And that's where we found a lot of the cost was coming to. Now, if you use um, our template for the control group, we brought that down to about two hours. So we can see about a $200 reduction in each template. And then if we can use AI, or specifically chat GPT, I managed to get it to write each recommendation under half an hour. Wow. And anybody who knows that knows that it wrote it in two minutes and it took me 28 minutes to read it. But if you want to go from three hours per strategy to 30 minutes, that's a massive reduction in cost and allows you to get these plans off your plate at the level that we need to be doing in order to stay relevant in today's landscape. Yeah. Do you, do you mind talking a little bit more about that research in particular? Because I know just from that um, journal article, you had this really easy to follow table where you had the Corporations Act and sort of ticks and you know crosses. How hard long it took me to write that? Christ. <laughs> no, just tell us about it. I think it's really fascinating. Um, so it, it's cut, it's, it, it got, we got it to the point where it could read its own and it, it became self developing. So, for example, we gave it a prompt. We said, create a superannuation contribution advice, outline some benefits and considerations, and then make sure it adheres to these regulatory guides and these parts of the court back. And then it would go in. And if it was good, I would accept it. And if it wasn't, I would ask it to increase. Yeah. Yeah. And then so we got to the point, it didn't actually take that long. The prompt wasn't that hard where... There was, for example, 14 subsections of the Corporations Act where that particular part of advice would have been a a judgment against you. And so I got it to identify itself and then I got it to decide whether it had adhered to what the Corporations Act needed. And it got to the point where it was so good, there was only three parts that needed or two parts that needed human application. So, but I mean, that could be addressed. It won't know... The, one of the fundamental issues with this, which is fine because paraplanes don't know it either, is it doesn't know what else you've done. So if I say put 27 grand into super, it'll say, okay, but it doesn't yeah. know that you already put 10 grand into super. Yeah. And so of that, there was two inabilities to address and then there was one application of judgment, but that's very easy to catch. Yeah. What I'm sort of getting at, what I'm alluding to here is that we're becoming very protective of what we think financial advice is and refusing to get things off our chest. And the quicker we can accept that, because what I do and what you do and what Joe does down the road, they're all the same thing. So the clients come to you for a reason. They're not actually sold on the idea that your SOA has to be a certain font and take 74 weeks to get out. Yep. The quicker you can get it done, the better you are to these clients. Yeah. And, yeah, it takes the, the pressure on that pressure off that SOA being a sort of sales document. Um, no, that's really insightful. And just because of the time it takes to publish research, I assume that was using an earlier version of, of ChatGPT. So if you tried that again today, I assume it would actually address yep. some of those issues or 
it would be even quicker, do you think? It's even better now. So once you teach it about it, I've got um, threads where it knows just as much as I do. Well, far out. And then, uh, Ben, you're, you're not stopping there. I also saw that you're working on another research project, this time on sort of payment frameworks in, in financial yeah. planning. Yeah, that one's hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Without antagonizing every licensee ever, that one's really hard. But it's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. So we're trying to figure out how to get paid faster. And by doing so, we reduce a lot of the costs that inherently get put onto us. And we actually take a lot of the liability back onto ourselves, which is fine because we've got self licensed now anyway. So it's a massive step forward. Um, and I'll answer any question you want about it, but there's going to be a lot of upset souls in licensee world around that. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm really sort of passionate about this too. Like I think the days of sort of 1990s revenue management software uh, are just, yeah, I'm even in our business, we're about to build an internal revenue management tool. And like, for example, we use Stripe heavily for our um, client billings. But then when you introduce you know, all it really takes is a client where you've got, you know, some coming from direct and some coming from platform or multiple platforms. Like, yeah, tell us about your experience there and, and what you're sort of thinking of, of what it's going to look like. Oh, we can't, we kind of just wanted a division of um, if we submit a fee request, there, there's no reason that you should settle on it for 60 days, yeah. you know, because we do the work, we cover the costs, um, and we've been talking to some of the product providers now, and a lot of them seem quite happy. That a lot of the issues come from the fact that it's got to be released on a certain date to a third party and then sat somehow, and then eventually it gets paid to the bloke that wanted it a month ago and right. completely forget about it. And so we're trying to figure out like an application of judgment, how we get that from them to you faster. And a lot of them have a lot uh, has very similar reservations too because when they go to get the call back, there's often no funds there. So that getting too into it, um, it makes a lot of sense, especially for streamlining the advice process and getting advisors paid quicker to begin investigating these areas. Yeah. And so you, you're sort of also alluding to there that there's the there's the delay in, you know, platform pays the licensee. You might not be self-licensed. And then licensee sits on those funds for a certain period of time and then the actual advisor gets paid, as you were saying, sometimes up to 60 days later. Is that what you're sort of alluding to there? Yep. Yeah, okay. No, I'm um, I'm excited to see where that goes. Ben, thank you so much for your time today. Um, have I missed anything? Is there anything else you want to say in regard to your research or anything you want to add? The only thing I'd leave you with is if you have questions and you're an advisor and you want to know more about this, just jump on LinkedIn. You know, like a lot of people say, oh, I read your stuff and I go, what part? <laughs> Like, I don't really read it that much. You know, so if you want to be better and you want to know more, we are more than happy to share. Perfect. Ben, thanks so much for your time. And it's awesome.